Hey, how's it going guys? Bob here. Today we're going to take a look at the new NaviLink Lite Wi-Fi control system for tankless water heaters. Let's do a quick unboxing first, see what they sent us. Looks like right on top, a user and installation manual. Not really too much there. Here's the unit itself. Looks like some LEDs on top for communications and Wi-Fi connection. Two buttons. Then on the bottom an RJ45 and a power port. On the back maybe a diagnostic connector there. Here's a box with some hardware in it. Some anchors and screws to mount the unit onto the wall. Some adhesive magnetic strips that you could alternatively use to mount the unit right to the side of your metal tankless water heater. And in the bottom, a generous length of cable with an RJ45 on one end and a Molex type connector on the other end. Here I've installed the adhesive magnetic strips on the back. Here's my tankless water heater installed. It's a new unit, the model 240A2, as of March 2023. First, what we want to do is power off the unit on the front panel. Now that the unit's powered off, we want to remove these two screws at the bottom of the front case. And on the top of the unit, you'll find two more screws that need removed. Now with the front cover carefully removed, power off the breaker switch here. I didn't know this was here when I did mine, but it's safest to power that off and or unplug the unit. I'll take the supplied wire, leave a length with the Molex end enough to reach over to the left side of the control panel. Take the RJ45 end, and I'm going to feed it down through this grommet up along the outside of the water heater. Now I'll take the RJ45 end of the cable I pushed through the grommet, plug it into the NaviLink light box, and slap it up to the side of the unit with the magnetic adhesive strips. I've coiled up the excess wire down here out of the way in the side of the box. Now I'll take the Molex end, route the cable over to the left side of the control panel and plug it in. Power on the breaker switch and hit the power button on the front panel and allow the unit to boot up and stabilize. Then hold down the menu and back buttons for three seconds. The service installer menu will appear. Choose option one, installer menu, hit OK. It prompts for a password. The factory default password is one, two, three, four. If your installer changed this, you should know this ahead of time so you don't run into problems at this point. Choose number three, the application settings, hit OK. Number one is NaviLink, hit OK, hit OK on NaviLink connection, hit OK again, and enable and hit OK. Hit the back button repeatedly to return to the main screen. At this point, my unit decided to go into a startup mode and ran for a little bit and then purged. At this point, refer to the NaviLink user manual as to how to download the app, set up an account, and register your product. Launch the app and click Sign Up at the bottom of the screen. Agree to the terms of service and create an account using your desired email and password. Select Owner or Product Owner as Member Type. 
Enter your first name, last name, and phone number. After registering your account online and logging into the app, go to your Navilink light box and press the Wi-Fi button, the bottom button, for three seconds and hold it. The Wi-Fi LED will start blinking blue. At this point, go back to your app on this product settings screen and click product search button at the bottom. Choose the appropriate 2.4 GHz wireless network from the list provided. Put in your password to connect. Next, register your location and address on the map provided. Click Start at the button of the screen and sign in with your name and password to your account. And with any luck, you'll see the status of your water heater on your app. Just pausing here so you can see some of the parameters at the top. At the bottom, the EMS will show you some graphs. I haven't found them very useful right now. You can change from gas usage, domestic usage time, and uh, the count, whatever that is. So I don't know what the units are, and I don't know exactly what all this is going to tell us. Hopefully this app will be improved over time. I hit the auto refresh button at the top of the screen and went to a nearby laundry tub and turned on the hot water. I wanted to see if it would auto refresh on these parameters on the screen. And there we see the BTU usage jump up. We see the operating capacity at the bottom at 18.5% and the inlet water temperature down at the bottom. It says 83 right now. This one was interesting to me because in Pennsylvania, the groundwater temperature can be from 40 to 50 to 60 degrees, probably more around 50. And we'll see as it goes that that keeps dropping and gets colder and colder. So you can see your inlet temperature, your flow rate, 1.4 gallons per minute, and then the outlet temperature at 134, even though I have it set at 132, your gas usage and so forth. Pretty nice when it's working. It hangs up sometimes. Sometimes the server gets a little funky, but it's pretty nice. And down at the bottom, of course, you can power the entire unit on or off, or you can reset your temperature. So I wanted to see what would happen when I turned the faucet off. So when I did, we'll wait a little bit here and we'll see. There we go, operating capacity down to zero, BTUs down to zero, and it does its little purge thing, but yeah. Pretty neat. Right, so at this point I was comfortable that the Navilink light was working properly and I put the front cover back on and we put the screws back in and we were ready to go. Of course this picture is before I installed it, but you get the drift. Now I want to do an addendum to this video with some information I think is helpful. Down at the bottom of this app, they have this weekly set and it takes you in where you can set the recirculation times for uh, the water heater. So you click up here on Monday through Friday and see it'll show like on at 6.50, off at 7.50, on at 10.50 at night, off. And you can set all these different times for Monday through Friday and Saturday through Sunday separately. Now I need to talk about this. Down at the bottom of the main screen, see where it says weekly set and it has the orange button on, turned on. To me that's turned on, it's orange, but over on the left under it in orange it says enable. And this has really confused people online and they've complained about it a lot. They think that should say enabled with a D on the end. And I agree. However, to me, I just look at the button and that's on to me. So you have to make sure that that is enable, that is turned on, that button is orange on the right, and then your weekly schedule that you've set on the page after that is in effect. Otherwise, it will not recirculate on your schedule. Now let's hang out on this topic for quite a while. This is a copy of a page from the user manual and it doesn't give you much information. I called Navian Tech Support and talked to them and I feel the information they gave me is good. So let's talk about this. This is your recirculation settings that you can set on the panel of the unit itself. And this 
I think is for external and internal circulation. I have the 240A2 model, which has internal circulation, a little tank in there. So that's what I'm using. That's what this refers to. You can set these options. If you set always on, and I asked them, I said, what does that mean? Is it recirculating all the time? And their answer is no. What it does is it checks every 30 minutes and it says, is there a nine degree drop in the temperature or more? So nine degrees or more, it checks every 30 minutes. If so, it'll kick on and it'll recirculate and bring it up to your set temperature. Okay, and that'll do that all the time, every 30 minutes. So it's not running 24 seven, but it's just all the time. It'll, you know, 30 minutes, it'll check and say, hey, it's more than nine degrees or nine degrees or more and it'll recirculate and warm it up. Intelligent. I don't, I don't have a use for it. Basically, it's going to look at what your usage is in your household for a week after you turn it on. And then after that, it's going to use that as a pattern. So, you know, I, I get up every morning at seven and it noticed me doing that. And the problem with that is unless that first week where it's learning what you do is perfectly accurate, after that, it's never going to be right. So I'm not even going to bother with that. Now, the weekly, the calendar, the one that I have mine set on so that it uses those those times in the app, that um, I can set the schedule when I want it to recirculate on and off. But here's the thing. I asked the guy and he said it works like this. So say in the morning you get up at 5 a.m. and you know you start taking your shower and then the kids get up and all this stuff and, and, and it's 8 o'clock when they're out the door and everybody's out the door. You set that thing for like 5 a.m. start. It'll absolutely come on at 5 a.m. and recirculate. And then every 30 minutes after that, it says at 5.30, has it dropped more than nine degrees? Okay, kick in. Otherwise, it just keeps going and it'll check at six o'clock, 6.30, seven o'clock. So every 30 minutes it checks and if it's nine degrees or more difference, it'll kick in. And then absolutely it will stop at the stop time, let's say 8 a.m. So I believe that also works for the intelligent. So all these settings, however you setting, set them, they're telling me that it's always still on a 30 minute check for a nine degree drop or more, or it doesn't run at all. So that was very important for me to understand what that thing did when it recirculated. And lastly, a few things I asked them about. Um, I said, as far as the time set on the device, if you go through some of the menus on the front panel here, you can set your date and time. My installer had mine set back three years ago. It was not correct. So I had to change that. And I, I that would have to be important for your weekly schedules to run accurately, right? It needs to know what time and day it is or it's not going to work. So I said, how is that time updated? Now that I have the NaviLink light, um, does, does it update via Wi-Fi? Or alternatively, what about daylight saving time, which, you know, we do here in Pennsylvania? And it was unclear. It was, it was, the support was not helpful in telling me so for now, I'm going to monitor this and I'm going to make sure that the time is set correctly for daylight saving each time and, and make sure that the time is accurate in my device because they were not able to answer how that's kept updated. Next, I asked if the NaviLink has an internal web server. Um, is my phone directly connecting locally through my Wi-Fi network to the web server in the NaviLink and getting the info? Or is that information being pushed up to a server um, in the cloud and then my app is getting it from there? The tech support told me that it was a direct local connection in my house only. However, I don't know that for sure. I suspect otherwise only because a lot of times it'll say server not reachable when I go into the app. Now, that could be the web server running in the IoT device itself. But until someone verifies or confirms that for me, that is unknown. And I did ask that question. So in conclusion, I think the NaviLink Lite 
is a nice tool. For 100 bucks, I got it at my local plumbing supply store. I had them order it direct from Navian. Um, I'm one of the first ones apparently to have the unit. Um, Navian Sports says they don't even have much information on it themselves. Uh, I'd really like to see some changes in the app. I'd like to see the front panel status on the app so I can see if it says it's purging or standby or whatever. Why can't I see that? Um, and f I think also the graphs, the app, you know, the graphs need updated here. We need to understand what the units are and what is it really telling us on these um, usage graphs. Well, as always, I hope this has been helpful and thank you for watching.